بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستكفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم ركيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد all praises and thanks are due to Allah we praise him we seek his help and we beg for his forgiveness we seek Allah's refuge from our evil deeds whomever Allah guides cannot be led astray and whoever is left astray shall find none other than to guide him I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone who has no partner and I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings of Allah be upon him is his slave and messenger. Today we converge for the first time here in Masjid al-Nur, Wusetu Abuja for the Quranic exegesis to be delivered to our sisters, to our mothers, and to our daughters. I couldn't find time to begin at the beginning of Ramadan due to some uh, responsibilities beyond my control. Because of this, my brother, Fadilatul Akh Sheikh Abdullahi Abbazaria, has been delivering lectures here going through the book of uh, Sifatu Sawmin Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which has been authored by both Salim Bun Eid Al-Hilali and Ali Hassan Ali Abdul Hamid. Today, inshallah, I will begin the lesson with you and I do hope that tomorrow, inshallah, we will converge again for the same tafsir and after tomorrow, inshallah, the next lesson will be on Saturday. Furthermore, looking at the time constraint, we will only select some parts of the Quran and discuss within that period. And I feel it is important to use the opportunity and take some relevant verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes to us the manners of our believers or the qualities of the slaves of the most merciful. As we have so many examples in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expounds to us some qualities that we are urged to emulate in order to be among the believers. And uh, based on my discussion with a uh, few of you, today, inshallah, we will begin our lesson with the complete part of uh, Surah Al-Furqan. Surah Al-Furqan is the 23rd chapter, or rather the 25th chapter of the glorious Quran. 
However, in the course of explaining the complete part of Surah Al-Furqan beginning from Wa Ibadu Rahman, that is chapter 25, verse 63, up to the end of the chapter, that is verse 77. Within this year, inshallah, our discussion centers around the complete part of uh, Surah Al-Furqan from Wa Ibadu Rahman al Ladina Yamshuna al Al Ardi Hawnan. And in the course of our discussion, there are other few places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to us some qualities of believers, like the beginning part of uh, Surah Al-Mu'minun, from that is uh, chapter 23, from verse 1 to verse 11. Starting from Qadi Aflaha al Mu'minun of to Alladina Yadithun al Firdausa, whom Fiha Khalidun, and also Surah Al Ra'adi, that is the chapter 13 of the Quran, from verse 19 to 25, starting with Afamaya Alamu Annama Unzila Ileka Mirra Bikal Haku, Kaman Hua Aama. Innama yatadhakar ulul albab. So, inshallah, the main discussion, the main Quranic exegesis for our mothers, our sisters, and our daughters this year, inshallah, is to describe the qualities of uh, the believers, the good manners of the believers. And in the course of doing that, I will urge our sisters, our mothers, and also our daughters to do a form of synthetic analysis, to partake in self-judgment, self-assessment, and self-criticism. What I mean by that is in the course of discussion, any quality we mention is good to compare with your own action, whether you are doing it correctly or not. If you are doing it correctly, be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala try to be consistent in doing that. And if you are not doing it correctly, you are supposed to try to see how you can improve. Because this is one of the wisdoms why the Quran has been revealed to us. is in order to make us better human beings. And it is because of this Allah Ta'ala has revealed the glorious Quran. Quran is not just a book for you to read, but rather is a book that while reading, you partake in self-assessment. Because in the entire glorious Quran, you will discover that the book has been dominated by the do's and don'ts. Do's are the commandments. Don'ts are the prohibitions. It is because of this, I urge all of us to partake in this self-judgment, self-assessment, where we go wrong, we partake in self-criticism. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of us among the major beneficiaries of the blessed month of Ramadan. Today is the 16th of Ramadan, 1443, after the hijrah of our beloved Rasulullah, Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him from Mecca to the city of Medina. So today, inshallah, we begin by Surah Al-Furqan, chapter 25, uh, commencing from verse uh, 63 up to verse 77. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us aright. May he subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to read the glorious Quran correctly, interpret it correctly, and may he give us the ability to implement the do's and don'ts of the Quran uh, 100%. So, inshallah, with these uh, few words, I will urge our memorizer to begin from verse 63 of Surah Al Furqan, chapter 25 of the Glorious Quran. Tafadal. <laughs> من 
همزه ونفخه ونفه وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما والذين إذا أنفقوا لم يسرفوا ولم والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ومن يفعل ذلك يلقى أفاما يضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانا إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما ومن تاب وعمل صالحا فإنه يتوب إلى الله متابا. Continue to the end of the chapter. والذين لا يشهدون الزور وإذا مروا باللغو والذين إذا ذكروا بآيات ربهم لم يخروا عليها صما وعميانا والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما أولئك يجزون الغرفة بما صبروا وينقون فيها تحية وسلاما خالدين فيها حسنت مستقرا ومقاما قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاؤكم فقد كذبتم فسوف يكون لزاما جزاكم الله خيرا I want to urge our mothers, our sisters and our daughters to ensure that you memorize these verses by heart. They are very important. You need to always recite them, compare the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your action. Where you do right, you thank Allah ta'ala for that. You try to improve your sincerity. Where you do wrong, you try to amend so that you become a better Muslim. So this is very important that you memorize these verses by heart. Even after Ramadan, you will be able to continue to improve to be a better Muslim. And this is indeed very important. Allah Ta'ala says, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ حَوْنًا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا صَلَامًا the slaves of the most merciful the slaves of the most merciful the slave of the most compassionate the slaves of the most beneficent allah ta'ala 
is the most compassionate, the most merciful, and the most beneficent. Then he describes some of his chosen slaves, that is, the believers, and he describes them with some good manners in these verses. Prior to the explanation of the verse, it is important to remind ourselves that Allah Ta'ala has sent Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings of Allah be upon him to all of us for a one, with one mission. That mission is to perfect our good manners. That is why in a hadith, which is in Silsilatul Ahadith is Sahiha, hadith number 45, Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him says, Inama bu'ithtu li utamima makarim al akhlaq. I have been sent but to perfect your good moral behavior. So the wisdom of sending Allah's Prophet to all of us, to the mankind and the jinn kind, is to perfect our good moral behavior, to perfect our morals, to perfect our good characteristics. This is the wisdom that Allah Ta'ala sent him to us. And what we intend to discuss in these verses is just to show to us what are the good manners of a Muslim, how a Muslim is supposed to behave when it comes to his relationship between him on one hand and his creator on the other, between him and fellow human beings. This is indeed very important. By doing that, we are trying to fulfill the wisdom behind sending Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings of Allah be upon him to all of us. In another hadith, which has been reported by Imam At-Tirmizi, may Allah have mercy on him, hadith number 2005, our Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was asked, was questioned about the qualities that will admit a Muslim into paradise. Su'ila an ayyu amalin yudkhilul jannah. The qualities that will admit you into Allah's paradise. He says, Taqawallah wa husnul khuluq. Meaning, keeping your duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and good manners. These are the two qualities that will admit you to Allah's paradise. Number one is taqwa, keeping your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the do's and don'ts ordained by him. Number two, good manners, modesty, shyness, patience, steadfastness, generosity, forgiveness, humility, and many more. These are the good qualities of Islam that will admit you into Allah's paradise. One of the companions of the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, by name, Ashaq ibn Abdul Qais. Prophet looked at him and said to Ashaq ibn Abdul Qais, Inna fika khaslatayn. This hadith has been reported by Imam Abu Daud. May Allah have mercy on him. Hadith number 5225. Prophet looked at Ashaq ibn Abdul Qais and he said to him, Inna fika khaslatayn. Yushibbuhum Allah wa rasuluhu. You, Ashaq ibn Abdul Qais, have two qualities. And these two qualities, Allah and his messenger love them. Allah and his messenger love them. Look at it. You have two qualities that Allah and his prophet love them. Then Ashaq ibn Abdul Qais was flabbergasted. He asked, what are these qualities? The prophet says, Allah." He says, Al Hilmu wal Anna. Al Hilmu wal Anna. These qualities are Al Hilm. That is patience or endurance. Wal Anna and gentleness. Patience, endurance, and forbearance. This is number one. And number two, is gentleness. You should be very humble in whatever you do. 
you should be very gentle. Don't be somebody that is very arrogant, very harsh. Try to be very humble and gentle. These are the two qualities. Ashaq ibn Abdul Qais asks our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam by saying, "Did I acquire them artificially, or they are inherent with me? Meaning, are they natural qualities that Allah Taala has endowed them upon me naturally without any human effort, or I acquired them through my personal effort?" Then the Prophet said, "You acquire Allah Taala and doubt you with them naturally, without any personal effort. Look at it. The good manners of Islam to each and every Muslim can be divided into two. Firstly, there are inherent good manners, inbuilt, inbuilt good manners that Allah Taala has created you with them. Some of us." Are naturally patient. Some of us are naturally generous. Some of us are naturally humble. Some of us are naturally kind. Some of us are naturally upright. So these qualities that Allah Taala has blessed you with naturally, without any effort, they are called tabiiyah. So they are just part of you. Then there are qualities that you can acquire as a human being. You are not perfect. Identify the qualities that Allah Taala has blessed you with, without any human effort. So they are natural, and without any difficulty, you will be able to be consistent. Then, in your self-judgment or self-assessment. You identify your weaknesses and your shortcomings, and indeed your limitations. By identifying them, you will be able to acquire the qualities that you don't have, and you should strive to acquire them artificially by training and retraining yourself. There are stages of improving our good manners. Number one is sincerity and honesty. If you have al ikhlas, you are very honest. Allah Taala will make this life easy for you. Number two, acquiring sound Islamic knowledge by reading the glorious Quran and the authentic traditions of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. You will be able to understand your strengths and your weaknesses. Then number three, you need to find a mentor. Your most important mentor. And your most important role model is Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Thereafter, you can identify some righteous people that you believe they are better than you. Look up to them to see the way and manner they improve themselves. Then you try to emulate them. Then the last one, training and retraining. Identify your weaknesses. Like lack of patience. Try to see how you can improve. If you are provoked, remain calm. Don't speak. Don't reply. Don't retaliate. Try to improve on a daily basis. Challenge yourself to make sure that you are today is better than yesterday, and by implication, you are tomorrow must be better than you are today. This is the best way to improve. That is training and retraining yourself. So, because of this, good manners, the qualities of the believers, there are some that are inherent with us. Each and every one of us has some qualities that are inherent. They are inbuilt and they are natural. While some of us do have some qualities, they acquire them through artificial means. Training and retraining themselves, and this is indeed very important. We will be able to figure out this from the hadith of Ashaq ibn Abdul Qais, which has been reported by Imam Abu Dawda. May Allah have mercy on him. Hadith number five thousand two hundred and twenty-five. So Allah Taala says, "Wa ibadu rahman al-ladina yamshoon ala al-ard hawnan, wa ida khatabahum al-jahiluna." قالوا سلاما 
wa ibadur rahman the slaves of the most merciful allah ta'ala attach his name to his slaves according to sheikh tantawi may allah have mercy on him in his tafsir that allah ta'ala has attached their names to his name in order to show their status to show to us their position how allah ta'ala elevated them and most importantly he attached his name one of the most beautiful names to their names wa ibadur rahman the slaves of the most merciful the most merciful are uh, is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the most merciful then wa ibadur rahman his slaves their qualities will be mentioned insha allah in these verses and we should listen to them to see whether we are among them or not if we fulfill some qualities we should be thankful to allah and see how we can improve in the qualities that are missing so that we can be complete ibadur rahman the slaves of the most merciful look at the word most merciful ar rahman why allah ta'ala describes his himself as most merciful here is because these slaves are going to receive allah's mercy that is why he attached this beautiful name to their names because allah ta'ala will be merciful to them this ar rahman or a word associated to it like ar rahim has been mentioned 268 times in the glorious quran this is one of the words that dominated the glorious quran 268 times but if you want to consider including buffs from the word the root word of rahma you will describe you will discover that the word has been repeated 330 times This is to show to us that Islam is a religion of mercy. Islam is a religion of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and he is the most merciful. May Allah Ta'ala be merciful to all of us. Wa ibadur rahman, the slaves of the most merciful. Alladhina yamshuna 'ala al-ardi hawnan they walk on the earth with humility with sedateness they humble themselves while walking on the earth this word ar rahman because they anticipate mercy from allah taala being the most merciful they walk on the earth with humility allah taala is merciful if you read the quran you will discover that allah ta'ala shows to us that his mercy is for all allah is merciful to us is merciful to animals allah is merciful to trees to all his creatures to the entire universe allah ta'ala is merciful waktub lana fi hadhihi ad-dunya hasanatan this verse in surah al-a'raf verse 100 and 56 muhallu shahid may allah ta'ala reward you immensely muhallu shahid allah ta'ala says wa rahmati wasi'at kullu shay this is the point of a reference wa rahmati wasi'at kullu shay my mercy this is what allah says my mercy encompasses 
all things. My mercy encompasses all things, all his creatures. Allah's mercy is for the entire universe. It is because of his mercy that the good, the bad, and the ugly can eat, they can walk, they can sleep, they can build a house, they can be employed, they can be healthy. It's because of Allah's mercy. It is because of his mercy that animal can eat. It is because of Allah's mercy you can see even trees. They eat through photosynthesis and the many more. This is part of our Allah's mercy. So Islam is all about mercy. And the same way Allah Ta'ala he sent his prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him as the prophet of mercy. Huwa Nabiyu Rahma. Wa huwa Rasulun Rahma. Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him is indeed the prophet of mercy. This is another example recited by our memorizer. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ This is in Surah Al-Anbiya, verse 107. Allah Ta'ala says, while describing Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ We have not sent you, but as a mercy to the universe. So, the entire wisdom of sending Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings of Allah be upon him to all of us is in order to come and demonstrate, demonstrate his mercy to all of us. That is why وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ He is indeed the prophet of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lil'alamin Not only to Muslims. The mercy of Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings of Allah be upon him is to the entire universe. In this universe, there are Muslims and non-Muslims. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his message is about mercy. And he is indeed the prophet of mercy. And in Islam, we Muslims, we are also urged to be merciful to one another. Any example from the Quran? Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad Rasulullah. May Allah Ta'ala reward you immensely. This is from Surah al Hujirat, verse 29. The point of reference here is Surah al Fati, verse 29. Surah al Fati, verse 29. The point of reference here is Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Then, وَالَّذِينَ مَأَهُ أَشْدَاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَارِ رُحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ Those that are with him, they are merciful to one another. Believers are supposed to be merciful to one another. We should be merciful to one another. Indeed, in Islam, the way and manner we are merciful to others is in the same way Allah will be merciful to us. If you are merciful to your husband, to your sisters, to your children, to your associates, the label of your mercy to them, it is in the same way Allah Ta'ala will determine the level of his mercy to you. Because in Islam, man la yarham la yurham. In our religion, whoever is not merciful, then Allah Ta'ala will not be merciful to him. So this mercy is not only to those who admire you, not only to those who love you. In some situations in Islam, 
you are to be merciful even to your enemies. This is the teaching of Islam. You have to forgive them. Forgiveness is part of mercy. You have to ignore them. This ignoring them is part of your mercy. That is why we are Ibadur Rahman, the slaves of the most merciful. Allah Ta'ala is the most merciful. And he sent us the prophet of mercy, that is Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him as in Surah Al-Anbiya verse 107. And Allah Ta'ala, his mercy is for all as in Surah Al-A'rab verse 156. And he urges believers to be merciful to one another as in Surah Al-Fatih verse 29 or rather the last verse of that chapter. You see how Islam is. And Allah Ta'ala makes it a condition that if we are merciful to one another, Allah will be merciful to us. So that is the beauty of Islam. Wa ibadur rahman, the slaves of the most merciful, alladhina yamshuna ala al-ardi hawnan, they are the ones who walk on the earth, who drive on the earth, hawnan with humility. They walk in humility and sedateness. They walk with humbleness. If you see them walking, you will discover that they are very humble. They humble themselves. They are not in any way arrogant. Why? Because if you only recall the way, the ingredients that Allah Ta'ala deployed to create you and I is sufficient to humble ourselves. The ingredient that Allah Ta'ala used to create you and I just ponder upon this the content of that ingredient from your father or from your mother smell the odor of it is it that very beautiful that pleasant just recalling the origin of our creation the content that Allah Ta'ala extracted from our fathers and our mothers to create us Wallahi al-Adim is enough to make us to humble ourselves. The odor is not like a perfume. That is enough to show that our origin is all about humbleness. And we must humble ourselves. Why? Because we are in this world for a trial. Our final destination is going to be in the hereafter. And the quality of our destination in the hereafter depends on our actions and inactions in this world. Are you following? So the slaves of the most merciful, may Allah make us to be among them. Yamshuna, they walk on the earth in humility and sedateness. They humble themselves. And this is indeed very important. They humble themselves. They don't feel in any way they are better than others. There is no harm in feeling being blessed. But don't always feel you are better than all. Naturally, people are inherently arrogant. Most of them, except few that are blessed with humility. But the reason why Allah Ta'ala revealed the Quran is to come and conquer that evil ego in our body, in our heart. It is in your DNA. You have to deploy the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and conquer that ego and destroy that DNA in you. And this is indeed very important. وَإِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا The first quality is they are merciful. That is why Allah Ta'ala attached their names to his name. وَإِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ The second quality is humility and sedateness and humbleness. The third quality, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ 
qalu salama when the foolish talk to them arrogantly they reply peace they reply with the word of peace this is their third quality they are peace loving muslims wa idha khatabahumul jahilun when the foolish person the senseless persons the irresponsible persons the evil people speak to them arrogantly harshly without morality without any sense they say salama we are people of peace that is why there is an adage which says silence is golden sometimes it's even better to ignore than to reply there are many things you don't even need to reply you just ignore if you ignore that is the best reply you can give to a foolish just ignore him or just ignore her somebody insults you just ignore him you don't even need to talk to him because for you to reply you are recognizing him and this is what he is looking for if you reply her you are recognizing her so if you ignore her that is the best answer you can give to a foolish and that is their nature they don't have time to fight they don't have time to argue they don't have time to insult when you insult them you partake in character assassination they don't care they say salama we are peace loving people and this is the third quality quality number 3 of those to receive allah's mercy may allah ta'ala make us among them and it is because of this to show to us that islam is a religion of peace you will discover that allah ta'ala has many beautiful names most of them have been mentioned in the glorious quran and you will discover among the most beautiful names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is a name that has been extracted from this word salama that is peace tafaddal huwa allah alladhi la ilaha illa huwa almalik alquddus assalam almu'min almuhaimin alaziz aljabbar المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشبكون This is an example recited by our memorizer may Allah reward him immensely This is in Surah Al-Hashr verse 23 هو الله الذي لا اله الا هو الملك He is Allah Ta'ala there is no any deity deserves to be worshiped but him Al Malik he is the king Allah is the king not a king he is the king Al Malikul Quddus he is the holy As Salam look at it Allah is the source of peace As Salam Allah is the source of peace So Allah Ta'ala there is no any name of Allah that is attached to arrogance or fight or war you will discover that all the names of allah ta'ala in some how promoting peace allah is the source of peace and he is free from all defects and al mu'min and allah is the source of security if you are looking for security in your village in your state in your country in your continent allah is the source of security if you go back to him pray to him follow all the do's and don'ts ordained by him he will grant you that security and stability and this is indeed very important this is to show to us that islam is about peace that is why among the most beautiful names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as salam he is the source of peace and al mu'min and he is also the source of our security so the quality number 3 of the slaves of the most merciful they are peace loving people in fact even if you talk to them badly they reply you with better words 
Do you have any example in the Quran? May Allah Ta'ala reward you immensely. This is in Surah Fussilat, verse 34 and 35. Allah Ta'ala describes to us the good manner of his slaves that are to receive his mercy by saying, Wala tastawil hasana, wala sayya. The good deeds and the bad deeds cannot be equal. Idifa abilati hi asan. Repel evil with a better one. Repel evil with good. If someone gives you evil, reply him or reply her with a better word. Look at it. You have to repel any bad actions with good actions. If someone insults you, pray for Allah's mercy for her. If she prays against you, you pray for her. If she insults you, you mention something good you know about her. That is wala tasta will hasana wala sayya. Idifa abilati hi asan. Fa idha ladhi bainaka wa bainahu adawa. Then the one that between you and him there is enmity or someone who is hostile to you will become your bosom friend. Why? Because you are repelling evil with good. If you learn how to repel evil with good, that will automatically convert your enemy to be your bosom friend. Then Allah says, وَمَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ sabaru." And no one can attend this except those who are patient. If you are not patient, you cannot attend. Because definitely, it's not easy to do it. But if you do it, you will become a better Muslim. That is why Allah Ta'ala himself says, it's not easy. وَمَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ sabaru." No one can attend this except those who are patient. Between co-wives, you have to learn how to do that. You have to learn. You are two, three, or four at home. You have to learn. You don't have time to waste insulting, criticizing, replying evil with evil. If she is evil to you, be good to her. Be kind to her. Be generous to her. وَمَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ And no one can attend this except those that are blessed with a great fortune. If you are blessed with a great fortune, you will be able to attain this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to be among the Muslims that will be able to repel evil with good. And that is why Allah ta'ala says, وَإِذَا خَاتَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And this is indeed very important. You will discover this throughout the biography of Prophet Muhammad Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. The same happened with Isa alayhi salam. Jesus, peace be upon him. He preached to some people. While he was living, some were cursing him. And he was saying, Kafar Allahu amwalakum. May Allah protect their wealth. They are saying, Qatalaka Allah. Insulting him. And he was saying, Zadakum Allahu ilman wa imana. May Allah increase you in knowledge and faith. And he was asked, Isa, people who are praying against you and you are praying for them, he said, yes. They give me what they have. That is evil. And I always give them what I have. That is good. Am I anticipated to go and borrow evil in order to reply evil? No. I don't have any evil in my store. What I have is kindness, generosity, and good prayers. So I give them from my store and they give me 
from their store of evil. You have to learn this, but it's not easy. Allah Ta'ala says it's not easy. No one can attain except those who are patient. May Allah Ta'ala make us among them. So we have mentioned at least generally three qualities. Number one, the slaves of the most merciful should be merciful to others. Number two is what? Humility, sedateness, and humbleness. Number three, they are peace-loving people. And they also repel evil with good. Inshallah. Then the next verse will mention the fourth one. Now. <laughs> The slaves of the most merciful are those yabituna li rabbihim. They spent their night to their Lord, praying at night voluntarily, sujadan, prostrating, doing sujud, putting their forehead on the ground, wakiyama and standing. Meaning the slaves of the most merciful are people that wake up at night and pray voluntarily. It is a time that is prestigious to Allah Ta'ala. It is indeed a time that our prayers are being answered. It is a time that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will give us the opportunity. If you pray for his forgiveness, he will forgive you. If you pray... For some of your challenges in this world, Allah Ta'ala will respond positively. If you pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, looking for his Jannah in the hereafter, paradise, Allah Ta'ala will respond. So they wake up at night and pray. In this place, Allah Ta'ala describes their qualities with uh, praying voluntary prayers. That is an nawafil. But if you look at in Surah Al Mu'minun, you will discover that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them with praying obligatory prayers. So we have to reconcile both of them. They are committed to their five daily prayers, praying on time, praying according to the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Sallu kamara aitumuni usalli. You may wish to recite the verses from Surah Al Mu'minun. Please. <laughs> This is Surah Al Mu'minun, chapter 25, reciting from verse number 1 to verse number 11. If you go through, you will discover some of the verses are related to what we are explaining. In this place, Allah Ta'ala describes the slaves of the most merciful with voluntary prayers. 
to wake up at night and pray. But in Suratul Mu'minun, he describes them with obligatory prayers. That is our five daily prayers. The Quran says, Qadi aflahal mu'minun. Look at this beautiful verse. Believers are indeed successful. Believers are indeed successful. Verse number two says, Alladhina hum fi salatihim khashi'un. Believers are those that in their prayers, they pray in full submission to Allah. They pray in solemnity and full submissiveness. They committed themselves to Allah while praying. While in verse number 9, Allah Ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِذُونَ Believers are those who guard, who protect their prayers. They are very conscious. They protect their five daily prayers. They pray on time. They follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him while praying. Look at it. And verse number 10, he says, Ula'ika humul warithun. They are the inheritors. They are the heirs. Alladhina yarithun al firdausa hum fiha khalidun. They will inherit Jannatul Firdaus. The highest position of Jannah is Jannatul Firdaus. So, if we bring the two verses, particularly verse number two of Suratul Mu'minun and verse number nine, and reconcile with Walladina Yabitun the Rabbi Him Sujadawakiyama, then we can say we must guard our five daily prayers. In addition, we must wake up at night and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala describes his prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, that he wakes up at night and pray. Could you recite some examples, please? <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها المزمل قم الليل إلا قليلا نصفه أو ينقص منه قليلا أو زد عليه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا إن ربك يعلم أنك تقوم أدنى من ثلثي الليل ونصفه وثلثة ونصفه وثلثه وطائفة من الذين معه. جزاكم الله خيرا. These are three examples, examples from the glorious Quran. The first example is وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَحَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكْ أَسَا أَيَّبَ أَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحَمُودًا Allah Ta'ala commanded his prophet and by implication he commands all of us to wake up at night and pray at tahajjud فَتَحَجَّدْ بِهِ voluntary prayer that is نَافِلَةً لَكْ voluntary prayer for yourself because the reward is for you with this, you will attain maqam and mahamuda, the position of glory and praise. That is the highest position in Jannah. By praying voluntary prayer, in addition to your obligatory prayers, Allah Ta'ala will elevate, will catapult your position to reach the highest position of glory and praise in paradise. May Allah Ta'ala make us among the beneficiaries of this. This is in Suratul Isra, verse 79. Then the second example is from Suratul Muzammil, verse 2, 3, and 4. Qumi layla illa qalila. Nisfahu awinkus minhu qalila. Aw zidi alayhi wa ratili al-Qur'ana tartila. Wake up at night and pray, but a little. If possible, if you have 11 hours at night, pray for the majority of the hours. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you wish, you can sleep 
during the daytime. But that night time is important for your prayers. And the third example is the last uh, verse of uh, Surah Al-Muzammil, verse 20. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ تَقُومُ أَذْنَا مِنْ ثُلُثَ اللَّيْلِ وَنِسْوَهُ وَثُلُثَهُ وَطَائِفَةٌ مِّنَ الَّذِينَ مَأَكُ وَاللَّهُ يُقَذِّرُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ أَلِمْ أَلَّنْ تُوسُوا فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ فَقَرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنُ This is Surah Al-Muzammil verse 20. Even in this verse, Allah Ta'ala describes to us the qualities of Prophet Muhammad when it comes to praying voluntarily at night that your Lord knows you wake up at night and pray to third of the night but a little if you have 12 hours at night to third is around what eight hours but a little if you say but a little maybe you can reduce one hour so our prophet used to wake up at night and pray for five hours six hours as the case may be or thereabout so this is very important all the challenges we have we wake up, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at night. And if you are consistent in doing this, there is no doubt you will become a better person. Because you will get peace of mind. You will get tranquility. And at the same time, you will see your prayers are being answered. May Allah ta'ala answer all our prayers. Because of our time constraint, inshallah, we will uh, uh, stop here for today. Tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, we will proceed with وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا سْرِفْ أَنَّا أَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ May Allah ta'ala give us the ability to implement these qualities and may he make us to always be better Muslims and may he give us the ability to always improve and ensure that we are better today than yesterday and we plan to be better tomorrow than today. May Allah ta'ala forgive all our parents May he be merciful to them. May Allah Ta'ala forgive all our teachers and our scholars. May he forgive our children and our family members and all our associates. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala always guide us and protect us. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu Allah ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim. وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد